like to dig the dreads. This time, we're launching with the same rocket that we sent to the moon, but this time, we are going to Minimus. Now we've seen these launches many times before, so let's skip to when we're in orbit. If I can hit the right buttons, that would be great. Here we are, we're circular at 160 kilometers, ready to plot our way to Midmus. And as you can see, I have been a bit busy with other contracts off camera. But really, these satellite launches and other things don't really need to be seen every single time I do them. Now, Minmus has a quite inclined orbit and I have seen a few people try and do the plane change maneuver that you generally have to do while you're still in a circular orbit here. That's not generally a good way to do things. What's better to do is just add a maneuver and project your apparatus out to the same altitude as Minmus and then somewhere about here add another maneuver and then make the plane change now see we are really really far away from where Minmus would be at this particular point but we can change that just by dragging the node around our orbit till there and I think that's a pretty good encounter right there and the point of this is to use as much well rather minimize the amount of delta V we need because a plane change maneuver in an orbit like this is very delta V expensive. So warp to 22 seconds. So by doing our plane change out here, it'll take maybe 20 meters per second. But doing the plane change here, it could take a couple hundred. projected periaps is 28 kilometers nice and 35.7 meters per second in one day and four hours so about one and three quarter days but we have other things to do so let's bring up Kerbal alarm clock and being that this burn will take one second, you can set the alarm for say 15 seconds out. Add that alarm. So now it'll let us know when we're getting close to that maneuver. And we can just leave Val here to coast up to that. While we go back to the space center and launch another mission to fulfill more contracts. Because that's what we're all about, right? And it was the Muna Probe. So we've got a few contracts. Three in particular that this mission will aim to rectify. We have... Let's see... Science data from Space Run Kerbin. Space on the moon and from the surface of the moon. This got a the rescue mission. And the contract to build a new station. This will be in the next episode.
payload inside the fairing is a tiny lander. First booster separation. Now, we have to learn from our previous mistakes and put the fairing where it's supposed to be. And if you guys saw the last episode, you know how you came to that realization. Seems I made a bit of a mistake. The uh, root mistake was not putting any reaction wheels or batteries on this probe. The subsequent mistake was not keeping it pointed at, at the sun for as long as possible, which resulted in running out of power, and now I will not be able to reorient the spacecraft to point at the sun unless it does it itself now and I will not be able to fly it anymore so yeah this won't last me at all yeah as soon as it gets some power back it just loses it so this probe is essentially dead. Yet another wasted launch. Yay me! Oh well. At least we've still got Val on our way to Minmus. Unless this is going to be a bit more friendly to me. I'll try to salvage the situation, but not holding out much hope. Well, from here we can at least get a uh, temperature thing to satisfy the um, sides from around Kerbin. Contract. Or perhaps not. Well, it seems that we've oriented sort of right. Yeah, I might be able to get this to the moon as yet. But first, let's see where Val is. Val's out here. So, we'll follow through with Val's mission and then come back to that later. So, even though it shows it doesn't have a burn time, we remember that it was only one second. So, let's just time accelerate out. Loses down as we come in till we're 15 seconds out. Three, two, one, and just like that, we are crashing into Minmus. That is good for these, for the purposes that we want. And although it will take less Delta V to change that out here, we don't need to. Yep. And I'm not used to the game self 
coming out of warp or whatever you would call it as you approach an SOI change. So, just ease on in here, and there we are. Whoa, at maneuver, or not. Come on, there we are. So we want to burn radial out. The way I remember it is, if the notches are in, it's radial, radial in, and if the notches are out, then it's radial radial out. Just wanted to double check with the maneuver node. So just burn a little bit till our periaps is there. No, we wanted a bit higher because some of the mountains on Minimus are kind of high. And now that I think about it, we kind of want to be going the other way. Because Minimus rotates this way we're currently going this way. And there's our node. And we wanted to do these sorts of maneuvers way out here because that's how it's going to be as cheap as possible in terms of delta V. Yeah, uh, ten or eleven kilometers. Yeah, so one hundred and fifty-five meters per second, and in this stage, we've got about five hundred. Nice, plenty of fuel. And we've also achieved our goal of flying by Minimus. Now we also want to be doing science. So, nice bit of science from that. What say you, Goo? 22.5, we put that to good use. And 18. I would have liked to have three goos, but sometimes that's just not possible. So, warp our way in, slowing down so we don't warp past it. And that's always a danger. Unless you use something like Kerbal Alarm Clock. It's very easy to warp past where you want to be. Get captured. Whoa! That's weird. And we are currently crashing. Suborbital. I think I might have uh, slightly misread my numbers. Well, let's just uh, sort out this orbit a bit better. You want to aim for this big flat bit. Minmus is quite easy to land on almost anywhere except these cliffs or ridges or whatever you want to call them 
right on the side of the flats. Unlike the moon, which is knobbly and full of craters everywhere. But we want to make it as easy on ourselves as possible. So, temperature scans, goos. Now, we will get more science if. I take a goo sample from low orbit and the surface rather than low and high orbit. So that's what we'll do. That's the low orbit. Jetpack around so whoop, bumping into the spacecraft, causing it to rotate. That's real good. Take that from that. So now we've got a goo and a thermometer to run on the surface. And board. Stop that rotation. And crew report. Warp around. Minimus might be tiny, but it does take a little while to warp around it, especially when you're only at about eight kilometers above sea level. Alright, we'll start our landing run here, I think. Okay, what's expert telling me here? Encoding failed and will be restarted. Oh, great. Does that mean I've just lost this entire episode? Gosh, I hope not. But just in case I haven't, let's continue. Oh, look at that, there's the moon way over there. And descending. Okay, let's jet on over here. We want to be actually landing on the flats, not on those ridges. I don't know what exploit was going on about. I would use Bandicam, but license for that costs something like forty dollars and I do not have the money to go throwing around on stuff like that. So I cannot walk well below three kilometers. Ha, physics wall. And once we're down near the surface we'll just suicide burn a little bit and overcook it. In case you couldn't tell, I'm not in the best of moods today, but I'm recording because you guys seem to like this series. Yeah, so do I really, but just, there are days in everyone's life when you just wish you could just do nothing. We need a th severe thrust limit. And 
let's see if I can park this thing on its tail and then land the ship next to it. Attempted trick flying. I can't do that because really this thing is just way too big for any on Minmus. Let's just get over here to the place so that we can clear that. And down. Observe goo and all that good stuff. See, 45 signs as opposed to some like 18. That's a good a lot of science there. And we're on the great flats. And we come, well, first, we get an EVA report. And then... Whee! Spinny roundy. Soft land. All that good stuff. Great flats. Yeah. I don't have the patience to come up with something poignant right now. Alright, grab. Data. Let's just board and get out of here. Because uh, we're not done. We've got the science, We've got the contracts, we have no further business on this. We are done. Whoops. <laughs> Overcooked that a little bit. No. Oh. And this is so tiny. Doesn't really matter. That and the fact that this rock is so damn overbuilt. Now we can. Let's just burn home. We want 20 kilometers, if last time was correct, otherwise we are going to be skipping out. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, there we are. And all the yahoo of exiting a sphere of influence. I'm just going to cut to re-entry. And here we are. So whole Ditch that sideways. Close all that up.
and time for re-entry. Nice little sunset there. This sort of crashing into the atmosphere would not be very smart in real life. But in real life, you have other options. And I've just checked my recording folder, and that little thing with XSplit has caused this recording to be split into two videos. So, and it's run well over half an hour by now, so. I'm going to end this episode with this, with bits blown up, that's awesome, and I'll see what I can do about the probe, if I can salvage it, we'll see the, it landing on the moon in the next episode, if not, it will be completely focused on the space station. So, as Val hurdles through re-entry, it's time for me to say, see you guys later.